December 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 27 from the Old Testament. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, someone else and not your own lips. A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but vexation by a fool is more burdensome than the two of them. Wrath is cruel and anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are excessive. The one whose appetite is satisfied loathes honey, but to the hungry mouth every bitter thing is sweet. Like a bird that wanders from its nest, so is a person who wanders from his home. Ointment and incense make the heart rejoice. Likewise, the sweetness of one's friend from sincere counsel. Do not forsake your friend and your father's friend, and do not enter your brother's house in the day of your disaster. A neighbor nearby is better than a brother far away. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad, so that I may answer anyone who taunts me. A shrewd person sees danger and hides himself, but the naive keep right on going and suffer for it. Take a man's garment when he is given security for a stranger, and when he gives surety for a stranger, hold him in pledge. If someone blesses his neighbor with a loud voice early in the morning, it will be counted as a curse to him. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a contentious wife are alike. Whoever hides her hides the wind or grasps oil with his right hand. As iron sharpens iron, so a person sharpens his friend. The one who tends a fig tree will eat its fruit, and whoever takes care of his master will be honored. As in water, the face is reflected as a face, so a person's heart reflects the person. As death and destruction are never satisfied, so the eyes of a person are never satisfied. As the crucible is for silver and the furnace is for gold, so a person is proved by the praise he receives. If you should pound the fool in the mortar among the grain with the pestle, his foolishness would not depart from him. Pay careful attention to the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention to your herds, for riches do not last forever, nor does a crown last from generation to generation. When the hay is removed and new grass appears and the grass from the hills is gathered in, the lambs will be for your clothing, and the goats will be for the price of a field. And there will be enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household, and for the sustenance of your servant girls. God, many times we say we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But a lot of those times what we really mean is we don't want our feelings to get hurt by the person's response. If we're truly being honest, that's what we mean. And I've done this. I've seen other people do it before. And when we have an opportunity to either talk about you to other people, or two, we have an opportunity in love, correct another person to help them with, the, with accountability. Um, our first reaction, almost always, is no way I'm not going to do that uh, and that's what this uh, chapter of Proverbs part of it's talking about better is open rebuke than hidden love faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are excessive I actually have a friend on Facebook who anytime anybody says anything to anybody else even out of just pure love and grace uh, about helping them be a better person she calls it judging and that as a Christian, she's not supposed to judge, so she basically is judging the other person on what they're doing, which is a little bit hypocritical. <laughs> but we also do this when we have an opportunity to talk about you. Um, I have a friend who is a new Christian, and she's awesome. Uh, and she said, I, I, I'm ready to tell people about God. Like, she's a brand new Christian. She's like, everybody needs to know about God. She's like, I'm not sure I have the right words, but I still want to tell them at least what I know. And I thought that was so awesome. Whereas I met a Christian who's been one her whole life. 
And her response to me is, I'm too old. I'm tired. I just don't want to tell anybody about God. Ugh. Broke my heart when I heard that. So do we love people enough to look past our own ego, to look past the potential hurt or feedback that we might hear or receive from a friend? And it's not even a for sure thing, right? Uh, there's been many times where uh, I've been guilty of this and haven't wanted to say something out of that fear of, of what they were going to say to me. And amazingly, once I just was obedient to you, it wasn't as bad as anything that I conjured up in my mind. And of course, it, it comes back to trusting in you. Do we truly trust that if we're being obedient to you, that you'll take care of everything else? doesn't mean it's going to come out the way we want it to, but it will come out the way you need it to. You know, Proverbs goes on to talk about this in a couple different ways. This iron sharpens iron, so a person sharpens his friend. And if we're not willing to be accountability partners and discipleship partners to people, I don't know how we can help each other. And, and I really question the whole love each other. Do we truly love them the way that you love us, God? with no preconceived ideas, no preconceived notions, no ego in our ways. Are we really, really willing through love to tell them the truth? So I have that similar situation in my life right now. I have a friend and she's doing something that biblically isn't correct. And anytime I even come close to the subject of talking to her about it, uh, I get shut out with a tone and a look and yeah <laughs> and she's christian um but it's almost like we kind of have blinders on sometimes we we can't we're really good at giving advice maybe but we're not so good at taking it so god today i first and foremost i would pray that people would rely on your strength and your sense of discernment when it comes to those two things when it comes to helping another friend especially with something that they may not even see, a filter that may be in their life. If they are doing anything wrong biblically, we should, out of love and with the intent of reconciliation, bring that to their intention. If we don't, not only does it obviously affect them, but it affects other people around them too, depending upon what it is that they're doing. So by doing nothing, we're actually affecting the lives of many people. And part two, obviously, is to rely on your strength and, and being obedient. When you give us an opportunity to talk to somebody, to not let our fear intercede on, on behalf of that conversation, but allow your words to speak through our heart. You have always, when I've been obedient to you, given me the words I need in situations, easy situations as well as incredibly difficult situations. Sometimes I'm even astonished at what comes out of my mouth at some of those difficult conversations. But I know those words are yours. I know they're not mine. Um, so just allow us to be obedient in those times as well. And then the flip side, God, if, if somebody is trying to help us, allow our hearts to be open again through love of understanding that they have our best interest at heart. They only want what is best for us. And even though they may say the words wrong, or they may say them in the wrong tone or the wrong way of looking at us, that understanding that if that is a, a man of Christ, a woman of Christ, and they have your best interest at heart, um, that at least we should give them an opportunity and listen to them and then pray about what it is that they've said. I have a friend who, sort of an accountability partner, but definitely more a mentor than anything. Uh, and sometimes his words that he says to me are so crystal clear that I take them in immediately. Other ones, yeah, there's been a couple that I've had to pray on for weeks or sometimes months before, uh, with your help, I work through them. So God, allow us to remove fear from our lives. Allow us to remove ego from our lives and replace it with love and repentance and your strength so that our words, our deeds, our actions, our thoughts are all the ones that you want us to have. Thank you, God, for helping us and guiding us and teaching us and loving us enough to disciple us and discipline us. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.